Hi friends, I'm Shauna. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. Today we are doing a one week one palette with the Natasha Denona Glam palette. This was the most requested palette when I mentioned continuing with this series. So we're doing seven different, seven, <laughs> I don't know why I said that weird. We're doing seven different looks in seven different days. Just like in the last video, I will be cutting straight to the seven different looks. And then at the very end, I'll come back and share my final thoughts. I would love it if you would subscribe to catch more content like this and more potential future one week one palette videos. I also have one with the nudes of New York palette from Maybelline. If you want to catch that, I'll link that. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello, welcome to day one. So today, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a bit of a different look for me. So I just want to jump into things right away. Okay, so we're gonna be playing with some of the silver tones today, and I'm gonna go in directly with this shade right here. Now, I have rearranged my palette from its original layout, and that's why I'm gonna show you every single color when I dip into the palette so you can see. So we're gonna go in with this color right here. Hoping my brush will allow me to pick up a good amount of color. Oh, here we go. And we're gonna put this in the outer corner or the outer, the outer V. I did put my makeup on before this and I'm getting some fallout. <sighs> that was a mistake. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with this shade here to blend out the, the color and this look I'm doing today is based on a tutorial that Natasha Denona did and one of the things that I um, have learned from watching her as well as other makeup artists is they've said that you should be able to create most eye looks with just literally like two or three makeup brushes and so often what I've noticed is makeup artists using the same brush to go into multiple colors and they'll only switch up their brush when they need their blending to do something different. I'm gonna go with the lightest color now. And I have just like a fluffier brush. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this silver. It's the lightest. I think she might have gone in with maybe something like this. In the tutorial, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm thinking. You know what? Actually, I just watched it on my wrist. Can we? That's the second to lightest silver. I'm actually gonna go in with that, and then we'll do a gradient with the lightest one coming all the way up. And now we'll go in with the lightest color. Okay, I may have gone into ham with that. Okay, we... Wow, that silver. What the hell? It really backs a punch. Thank you. 
When we do the inner corner, we'll use this silver for sure. Okay, so I feel like this look is begging for eyeliner. So I'm gonna use my CoverGirl brown eyeliner. It's the only one that I currently have. And then I'm going to, I'll talk you through the rest of the makeup look when I finish. We back, and for the rest of the look, walk you through my products real quick. I use my nude eyeliner from L'Oreal. And then for blush, I use my Nude Sticks color in Bareback. So I use it for blush, and I also used it as a lip product. So I lined my lips with Whirl, and then I put this on top, and then right in the center, I put just a smidge of gloss. This is Tower 28 Coconut. So here's the finished look. It's, it's, I, okay. The shadows, everything performed well, okay? There's not a problem here with the colors, the shadows, the textures, everything blended really well. Silver is just not, they're not colors that I use a lot. And when I do use these tones, it's typically not together. I have used this color before and I've also used this color before as well as all of the mattes but I haven't done an all silver look. It doesn't look terrible but I just am not used to seeing these colors on me. All right day one is done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this bit of a different look for me and I will see you back tomorrow for day two. Hello welcome to day two. Um, I'm laughing because uh, I was about to go in with a bit of a bold look today and then I had got two meeting requests so we're gonna have to keep it a little low-key today. Today we are gonna do one shadow look because I love a one shadow look and I, w I was trying to tell myself Shauna like don't don't do the look because there's one look that I do all the time but because it's probably like my signature one sh one shadow look with this palette I'm just gonna do it so we're gonna go in with this color here this, this is hands down my favorite color in the entire palette the reason for this I'll just go in um look at that Oh yeah, I want to do some bold lip looks today. And I love doing a look like this with a bold lip. Man, like this shimmer is so freaking smooth. I'm just putting a little bit more of the color on a brush. Okay, I know this is subtle, but that's the name of the game when it comes to, in my opinion, a bold lip look. And as I've said probably like a hundred times already about this palette, you don't see a lot of subtle looks with this palette. And it's great that you can have a palette that builds up and creates really blown out big looks. But this palette is more than that. It's way more versatile than that. And here's just one of the ways. So I'm going to go put on the rest of my look. And I'm going to come back with a really beautiful bold lip. So I'll be back in just a second. I'm back and I have the finished look. The lipstick is totally the star of the show and it is Radicchio from Bite. I have done almost this exact same look, even wearing the same sweater. But I've done it with Fiery Fuchsia from Maybelline. I love this bold lip and really subtle eye sorry i'm like staring at myself in the viewfinder it's i like i i love this look so much and here's the thing you're welcome to do a bold lip and a bold eye if that's your thing you know i don't think anybody should stop you from doing something that makes you feel good for me personally when i want to feature a bold lip I really just want the eyeshadow to be a supporting factor and 
I think that the shimmers in Natasha Denona are perfect for this exact purpose and and just because a shadow isn't big and bold and in your face does it make it bad or like a waste of eyeshadow i feel like i'm just going off on a tangent here i like a subtle look and i want to do a bold lip and that's exactly what i feel like this achieved i have a feeling this is going to be my overall favorite makeup look of the week so if I encourage you to do anything today, it's to pick a bold lip to create a look around and then pick your favorite shimmer that you think will complement it. So that's, that's everything for me today and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, welcome to day three. Today we're gonna be doing an all matte look. I think with this palette, we might just assume shimmers all the time. 10 of the 15 shades are shimmers. That's a fair assessment, but we're gonna work with just the mattes today and I wanna get started. So we're gonna go in with this one right here. Right, we're now going to go into the next shade. Okay, so I'm now going to go in with this brown. I'm gonna go in with this brush here. It's a little bit more precise. You know, to get a little bit more of a concentrated color. Okay, so I feel good about that. I think that what you could be doing with that stage as well could be with this brown if you wanted to introduce some kind of shimmer. But we're gonna keep it all matte. To, we'll try a brush and we'll go in with the very lightest shade. I've done looks like this with um, shimmers instead of a matte on the lid and I think I might prefer that just a little bit but I do enjoy an all matte look every now and then so I am going to finish up the rest of the face and come back I actually love the way that this turned out now that I have a full face I wasn't totally sold on the particular matte light color in this palette is the where you traditionally put a shimmer but as we've finished everything, I really like it. She's cute. I like this look. Uh, day three is done and I definitely have some interesting and exciting looks coming for you. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow for day four. Okay, hi, good morning. My landlord has been very loud today, so there's a chance this might switch over to voiceover. We're here a little bit differently this morning uh, for day four because I'm going to do very dark, bold, smoky eye, like one shadow look. We are going to feature this color. Yeah, we're going to go to voiceover.
here's the final look. I don't know if this look is better without lashes. I'm thinking it might be, but you know, we've committed, so we're here. I always feel like I, I get one rogue lash and then the other one is nice. So for the face, I used my Pat McGrath blush and flirtatious once again. I also put some right on my nose. I like that. I used Opal by Becca. I'm not gonna open it, it's shattered again. And then I have Modesty on the lips. And I also have Whirl as a liner. And then I have some of Coconut on top. This is probably my favorite look I've done so far because it's, I think, the most out of my comfort zone. Yeah, uh, that's day four for you, and I will be coming to you tomorrow with another look. Bye. Hello, welcome to day five. <laughs> We're gonna do uh, a bit of a different look today. I feel like all the looks have been kind of different. So we're gonna go in with shimmers and then we're gonna add in mattes later i've been watching a lot of natasha Denona tutorials over the past year and this is something that i feel like she does so i want to go in with some shades that have not been utilized so the main two colors are going to be these two they are the only pinky colors in the palette so we're going to put this one on the like first third of the lid and then we'll put this one on like the last or the first half and the other one on the later half and I'm gonna try a brush hold on hold please yeah I'm gonna try a brush we'll see so we're gonna go in with the lighter of the two shades this one I'm also super tan today. I used self tanner yesterday night. And I just smell like self tanner. I can't stand it. And I was supposed to wash it off this morning, but I woke up late and I have an I have a meeting. Now we're gonna go in with this color right here. I don't actually know that I've ever used it. it doesn't, I mean, I have, I just swatched it before uh, coming on and it doesn't even look like it's been swatched. I need a different brush. I feel like potentially you could leave that there if you brought up the shadows a little higher. They're sitting a little too low for me. I'm just gonna be cleaning off that brush a little bit. You know what? I do wanna actually just amp this up a little bit. I just cleaned off that brush and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. I'm sorry, but the blend on these Natasha Denona shades are incredible. I talked some smack about this palette. You know, about like the formula not being unique. But I do feel like the blendability is unparalleled. It's really amazing. Okay, so now we're going to take this darker. Oh, put my finger in it. The darker brown. And then we're just gonna go in. Why does it look on camera like there's a patch? Oh, is it just me? I don't know, I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. 
Ideally, I feel like you would need a finer brush. I guess we'll use this one. The one I was using is too thick. Okay, I feel like the shape got away from me at the top. Do I have a clean brush? I'm not in love with how high I brought it. Okay. I think that's good. I'm gonna go finish off with the rest of my makeup and I will be back with the finished look. Guys, I freaking love this look. Why? I'm sorry, I'm that girl looking in the viewfinder. My hair is looking a little crusty, but like we're making it work. So on the face, I used my Franken bronzer. I thought it would go with the eye look because it was kind of a warmer eye look with like kind of pinky tones. It looks okay, but I would think prefer something else. Um, I also put a little bit on the nose and then I also used Becca Opal, Modesty, and Whirl. I'm about to step into a meeting, so I just was kind of picking what was close by. Also, on the face, I have to say it. I already mentioned I self-tan. And can we see? Something is not, like, sitting right on the face. Like, that. I don't know if, if it was, like, the tanner or if it was the primer I put on underneath. But... It just wasn't sitting right on the face so anybody else like i'm so used to seeing myself with glasses because i wear them basically from the time i get up like the, i put them on first thing and the only time i take them off is basically when i go to bed so or like go to the gym or stuff like that so whenever i'm on here doing looks without my glasses um i'm like oh it doesn't look doesn't look normal because I'm so used to seeing myself like this. And then also, you know, magnifies my eyes a little bit. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow for day six. Hello, welcome to day six. Today, I am... I'm going to do a really simple look. So far in this video, I've used every shade except for this one and this one. And I'm keeping... A look for day seven with those in mind we're gonna go in with this guy right here then we're gonna build it up with this one. So on day two, I used the shade all over the lid. And really for this look, you could use any of these three shades as the shimmer. So I'm just gonna go in with the second one, the light, the light gold. And I'll be back with the finished look in just a bit. I'm back. Finished look. Simple, 
easy, love it. So for my face, um, Becca highlight in Opal and my blush situation got a little out of control. I combined three blushes. My Bounce and Blur in Blurred Buff. My Franken blush. And my Pat McGrath. <laughs> you can't tell. And then I have all my regular mascaras. That's it for me. And I'll see you tomorrow for day seven. Hello, welcome to day seven. We're gonna be getting into a gold-ish, golden brown look today. So I don't wanna I don't wanna play around here. Like we're gonna get into it. Okay, we're gonna get into it. And we're gonna go in first with this gold here. I feel like I should have done this first. Okay, this is not the right brush. back and we have the final look on the cheeks we've done a lot of layering today <laughs> with products so on the lips I have modesty you know a usual suspect with blankety layered on top and then on the cheeks I have two blushes layered Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur with my Pat McGrath blush and flirtations. There we go. Those two are layered. So this look is very shiny. And something that I don't think you would maybe expect from this or something that I don't do a lot with this palette. So those are all seven looks, and I'm now going to hand it off to future Shauna to give a full kind of roundup and review of my experience and my thoughts on this palette. We're back, and it's time to talk about my final thoughts with this palette. Over the course of the last seven days, I have used every single shade in this palette at least one time, and using them back to back has really... This changed my opinion a little bit. And as I'm wrapping up this video, I was thinking of three questions that I really want to answer. One, has my opinion changed? If so, or, you know, either way, why? Is the palette worth the money? And then thirdly, who would this palette be for or not for? Because I think that's equally as important. And some of the, you know, we'll get into that in just a second. <laughs> so... 
what has changed about oh actually actually before we get into it today i am wearing this is like a bonus eighth look i am wearing this shadow with this one right on top it's so beautiful it's so beautiful i love it so much i had to do a duel of that two shadow look that i did in my most expensive makeup video i wanted to do a look just like this but it didn't turn out how i want and this one is just the shimmer and the shot it's unreal anyways i love it i love it just as well i have a full video swatching and comparing all of my eyeshadow palettes which I posted in November. So if you want to see that or the video where I talk about high-end makeup and my original thoughts about this palette, I'll link both of those uh, as well. So I'm going to be answering the first two questions at once. Is the palette worth the money and has my opinion on it changed? I stand by my original statement that the palette is not worth the $90 price tag or $90 Canadian price tag. I'm personally of the camp that I don't think any palette is really worth that price. At the end of the day, we're just talking about powder. Like we're charging $90 for powder. I think we would all be shocked as to how much this palette actually costs to manufacture. Like I think the profit margin on this is more than 50%. So I just kind of feel like a lot of the luxury products like they've convinced us that this is worth $90 when in reality, I think it's closer to like $25 to $45, but also the palettes that are worth that amount of money, you know, the $45, $50 range, like ABH, they're not worth $45 either. You know what I'm saying? But this like luxury palettes, I think the profit margins are even bigger. And I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle makeup artistry or the fact that, you know, what factors into palettes is packaging or formulation or even color story, you know, or paying people salaries to produce these things. I'm not trying to say that nothing else really matters, but I don't think that this is worth like in what, what about luxury makeup? What about this makes it worth $90? There are things about it that I think make this palette more unique than other palettes at this price range. Like the fact that you can rearrange the color story. That to me is just one of the best parts of Natasha Denona midi palettes. Not just their midi palettes, but um, even like their larger palettes, you can still do that with. This to me makes it more worth the money. Or if I had to say one, you know, brand was worth the money, I would probably pick, or the luxury price tag I mean, I'll probably pick the Natasha Denona because of the fact that you can rearrange the palettes. There's more money in that, you know, creating that kind of system. But at the same time, being able to rearrange your palette over and over, over again keeps me inspired, also gives me greater control over how I want my palette to look and what color story actually speaks to me. Because sometimes I think palette layouts just don't make sense in my mind. And so as somebody who is focusing on contentment with my makeup, being able to have that customizability really works and really helps me with my own contentment. What I have learned about this palette or what I've come to really appreciate is the blendability. This eyeshadow palette has some of the most user-friendly shadows on the market. They are so blendable, like they practically blend themselves. Like they are very low effort in terms of blendability, mattes and shimmers. These I think are the best matte eyeshadow formulation that I have in my collection. Now I'm not saying they're the best formulation on the market, just out of what I have tried. And so I think that when it comes to price point, there's at least a little bit of, you know, like there, there's some justification, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's something special about it. I've said that some of the shades in here are like nothing special. Like what about this formula is worth $90? I think I take some of that back or I've changed my mind a little bit working with these shadows so frequently. The blendability really is special. And I prefer this formula over 
just about every other formula that I own. I think maybe a downside though of how blendable they are is that they can blend into nothing, which I mean is both a downside and an upside because if you've packed on too much shadow, you can blend away most things and soften it to a degree that you actually can't with other palettes. But that also means that you could blend shadows away almost into nothing. I do think though that the metallics are a little bit less special. Like I don't think that their metallics are the most special or unique on the market. I think metallics overall are just easier to formulate. So for anybody to have a unique metallic formulation in 2022 would honestly be hard. So I don't think that you're paying for like a superior metallic formula. I think the mattes are really stand out in this palette. There's not a dud shade in here, which I'm really happy to see at this price point as well, because basically a $90 palette is what they're telling you it's worth. That's what I would expect. You know, that's what I would demand from this kind of price point. Now, who would this palette be for or not for? The, the most common look I see with this palette, or the types of looks I should say that I see with this palette, are these really big, bold, glam looks, which makes sense. It's called the glam palette. And when you look at Natasha Denona's channel, she is doing bolder, more vampy looks. Not necessarily like dark or grungy, just, you know, glamorous looks, lots of eyeshadow, nothing subtle, I should say. This palette does that really well. Because if you look at this color story, you do have a lot of depth in here. These three are pretty deep. These two are particularly deep. This one, I think depending on your skin tone, could be a mid-tone or a, like a deepening shade or a crease shade, potentially an outer corner shade depending on your skin tone again. This is actually like a pretty rich um, metallic. So there's lots of options in here to create depth and to create that boldness. What I see less of is people with my makeup style creating looks, you know, like a one and done shadow look or looks like today. I don't necessarily know that you would look at my look and say, wow, that screams glam palette to me. You can do so many simple looks with this palette. You can use any of these top shades here as one shadow looks. And of course, depending on your skin tone, you might gravitate to some of these darker ones versus some of the, the lighter ones down here. But you could also use any on the bottom here as one shadow looks as well. And in this video, you would have seen me use this one as a one shadow look. Truly a great, a great formula. And it's great for really simple, easy one shadow looks. The fact that this palette is so popular is only slightly surprising to me because I feel like traditionally people rely on mattes for their crease and outer corner shades and then shimmer on the lid. That's kind of how I feel like a lot of people do their eyeshadow. If that's your style, I don't think this palette is for you because that's going to limit you to these shimmers here. This, this palette is two thirds matte. And like, what would you do with these colors then? Like these three in particular down here, if you're not interested in using a metallic to deepen up your looks, if you have this palette and you feel like it's kind of stale, like the looks that you're creating are all the same or kind of stale. I think that could potentially be a reason why you're not reaching for this palette and also why this palette is not for you. I'm just going to say that. And so I think some people rushed to, to buy this palette because they were interested in the color story overall and maybe didn't necessarily think about all of the colors and how they would work in, in their lives. And I think it also goes without saying, if, it, if you don't like cool tones, this palette isn't for you. I don't think this palette is for everybody or even everybody who likes cool tones. As I've said, I think enjoying a shimmer in the crease or in the outer corner is an absolute must in order to get this palette or to actually see the use of it. And initially I was a little worried about the versatility of this palette because my looks were getting a little bit stale. And I've just come to, through this video, realize that there's truly so many looks that you can make with this palette. And the very first look I did in this video was inspired by Natasha Tanona tutorial. I think I mentioned that. I'll link that tutorial in the, um, 
in the comments. And Natasha Denona actually has quite a few tutorials with this palette. If what I've done today doesn't speak to you or you want more, go check out her channel because she has some great, great uh, options there. Would I buy this palette again if I lost it? Yes, absolutely. This is one of my favorite palettes that I own. And I've just come to enjoy it even more now that I've done this video with it, you know, created seven full looks with it. Eight now, technically, with this look. So that's everything for me today. I would love to know what you think about this palette. Do you currently own it? If you have previously owned it and decluttered it, I'd like to know that too. Thanks for hanging out with me today and joining me for another day of Vlogmas. And I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.